Horses are a biologically improbable species that were never meant to fly, yet the Pegasus has become a common feature in many fantasy settings, often carrying noble heroes into battle. If you like your fantasy to be all magic and no reason, that's perfectly fine. But if, like me, you wonder how you could add just a little realism to this fantasy species, wonder no longer. For a creature to really be recognised as a Pegasus, it needs the following key features. A horse body, bird wings, the ability to fly, and able to be ridden by heroes. The biggest difficulty with making a Pegasus work as a believable living organism is that you have two completely different types of forelimbs that both use very different shoulder joints to function. A horse shoulder moves forward and back when running, but a bird shoulder moves up and down with some rotation when flapping. And these two movements are going to get in each other's way if the limbs are close together. You might think, okay, but the Pegasus don't have to flap and run at the same time but they probably do to get airborne in the first place. While some birds can go from being stationary straight into flight, many birds need a little launch, a jump, fall or run up, in order to take wing. The gallop speed of a horse should be enough for a pegasus to take flight, but if the wing joint is positioned over or closely associated with the shoulder joint, then the wing is going to be forced backwards and forwards while it's trying to go up, down and rotate. That's a complex mess to account for when you're trying to get into the air. If you want this horse with wings to actually fly under its own power and not by magic, then we need to talk about sternums for a minute. Consider the skeletons of two birds. The kakapo is a flightless parrot. Its sternum, the big bone at the front of the ribs, is fairly flat with little muscle attachment. Contrast this to a macaw, who has a sternum that's been extended into a keel bone, which provides an anchorage point for big strong flight muscles. So if our pegasus is going to fly with bird wings, it needs a big sternum and a decent keel bone. This means either the bone and flesh extends ventrally towards those kicking front feet, or the thorax is smaller, like in the parrots. The density of the skeleton is another issue that must be considered. While most flying birds have several hollow bones, the bones of a horse limb are seriously solid. Those things pack a punch and a nasty kick. They're dense and heavy. Take a peek at the Quetzalcoatlus, the largest flying creature to live on Earth. This species was estimated to weigh around 70 kilos, even though it was up to three meters tall. Considering a horse weighs an easy 500 kilos, there is some serious weight reduction that needs to happen to get the Pegasus airborne. Reducing bone density and utilising air sacs is one way to do this, but it's not going to be enough. The gastrointestinal tract is another overly large, excessively heavy piece of anatomy that was never intended to get airborne. The sheer volume of horse guts is staggering. There might be 70 litres of fluid in the small intestine and up to 150 litres in the large intestine. It is mostly fluid, so you can estimate a weight at about one kilo per litre. This is because the horse is a hindgut fermenter, meaning it cultivated bacteria in its large intestine to digest grass for it. The guts are basically big fermentation vats that turn cellulose into energy, and they're heavy. A pegasus could potentially have a smaller gastrointestinal system by changing the diet from grass to a higher energy, easier to digest food like fruit and grain. This should be easier for the pegasus to get, as flying should grant it more mobility. The higher digestibility of the diet means the huge large intestine and cecum are less important, potentially reducing the volume of guts required for digestion by 100 or more litres. That means 100 kilos or, or more weight reduction that we can use to get airborne. So how can we remake the Pegasus to solve the problems of conflicting shoulder motion, enough space for the sternum and flight muscles, and the horse body being too heavy? Let's start with the shoulders. To prioritise flight, the wing joint must be positioned cranial to the leg joint to flap effectively. 
but the leg has so much muscle that having both full-sized wings and front legs turns the front half of a pegasus into just a slab of meat. And that's not aerodynamic. The best solution I can conceive of is to shrink the front legs to make them less muscular and a lot smaller. If you reduce the size, muscular and length of the front legs, you free up space for the wings, reduce the weight of the animal further, and they're easier to tuck out of the way while in flight. This does mean that the hind legs must provide most of the power for locomotion. If you keep going with this idea, it might reach a point where the hind limbs are entirely responsible for ground locomotion, with the front legs only used to balance when feeding. And yes, I realise this is starting to sound like a kangaroo. The ratio of front to hind limbs in a full-size kangaroo may be a little extreme for the animal to still be recognised as a pegasus, but the ratios in the musky rat kangaroo seem reasonable. They can still use the front limbs for some locomotion, mostly turning, but most of the launch power still comes from the hind limbs. The pegasus must have strong back muscles to function this way, but that's the least of its anatomical concerns. If we enlarge the sternum into the chest for the flight muscles and extend the lung fields backwards into the freed space from the reduced gastrointestinal tract, we can fit all of our important features in there, but the internal anatomy isn't going to look like a horse. Reducing the creature's weight by shrinking the front limbs, reducing the density of the bones, and reducing the volume of the gut will make it easier to get the creature airborne but even then you will potentially still need to bend reality a little to allow the pegasus to fly, let alone with a rider on its back. I mean, who designed this creature anyway? Feathered wings also require frequent preening to stay in good condition for flight. The beaks of birds are adapted to do this, zipping up ruffled feathers back into their smooth shapes. A pegasus capable of flight needs to be capable of doing this too, Therefore, they need something equivalent to do the same job. If the pegasus is to look like a horse in the face, it needs to keep those dexterous, fleshy lips, but behind those lips we can consider a number of options. Either the creature can have incisors shaped to perform the same function as a beak, or it can have an actual beak-like structure hidden behind those lips. The added benefit of a beak instead of teeth is that it's also lightweight. The equine neck is not going to be as flexible as a bird neck, so the pegasus may have difficulty adequately preening the entirety of their wings. Therefore it's likely that this type of pegasus must live in a colony with communal grooming. So our winged horse is starting to look and sound an awful lot more like a bird kangaroo hybrid, but there's nothing wrong with that. Macropods like kangaroos have proven themselves highly adaptable evolving to live in a wide variety of habitats from open plains to cliffs to treetops. You could feasibly have pegasus species that inhabit any of these biomes. As some species variation, I wouldn't at all be surprised to see cliff or arboreal pegasus develop a two-clawed hoof like a goat or a three-toed foot like a horse's evolutionary ancestors instead of the single digit of the modern horse. The grip is a little bit better that way too. Arboreal pegasus may retain claws on their wings to aid gripping plants if they land too close. A plains type pegasus, even with the kangaroo like forelimb musculature, is the one most likely to resemble the classic mythological pegasus, though I still can't guarantee that it would be a comfortable ride. Of course you could magic the whole thing, but that's not why you're here now, is it? <laughs>